This is a quick tutorial on how to create the Eye of Partridge heel flap. I'll be using double pointed needles for this. These are a size two millimeter US zero. What I'm working on is a sock, obviously. I started in two by two rib with 56 stitches, worked my way up 22 rows in stockinette. I was using magic loop because I'm doing two socks at a time, but once I get to the heel, I like to only work on one sock at a time. What you want to do for the eye of partridge heel flap is knit the first row. I am knitting 28 stitches. 28 times 2 is 56. When you get to where you want your heel, you will split your stitches 28 on one needle, 28 on the other needle. So if you happen to be doing this in the round, you'll want to still split your stitches. So let's say I didn't have this DPN and I was working in the round, I would have still 28 here on this side of the circular, 28 here, and I would only work on one half. If you are working with a 64 stitch pattern, what you would do is divide 64 by two 32 and 32, and the same thing for 72. Split that in half. Or whatever your stitch count size happens to be, you split it in half evenly, and you only work on that one half for this particular heel. So now that I've knit all the way across, I'm going to turn my work around. This half I'm going to ignore. This half I'm still working on. All I did, again, I started here and I knit across and now I'm turning so I can continue to work. I'm still working on that same row. I'm just going to do it from the inside, from the wrong side and ignore this. Ignore these 28 stitches. That knit stitch row that I just finished is basically a setup round. You'll now do a repeat of four rows for stitch count of 56. I'm sorry, for a, well, yes, stitch, a stitch count, 56 stitches. When you're doing 28 and 28, you're going to do this repeat of four rows seven times. If it's a 64 stitch count that you're working on and you've split it in half, you're going to do rows one through four eight times. And if you are on 72 stitches and you've split it 36 and 36, 
you're going to do the 72 stitch row, I'm sorry, the 72 stitches. For that particular pattern, you will do rows one through four, nine times. So to say that a little bit more clearly, when you're doing 56 stitches on your sock, you'll do this rows one through four, you're building your heel, you're going to do it seven times. Repeating rows one through four, seven times. If you're doing 64 stitches on your sock and you've split 32 and 32 and you're working on that one side for the heel, you're going to do rows one through four for this heel pattern eight times. And if you're doing 72 stitches, you've split it 36 and 36, you're going to do this one through four row repeat nine times. So again, I've done my setup round, my setup row, you could say, my knit stitch is all the way across, I've turned, I'm now on the inside, the wrong side. Row one, you're going to slip the first stitch and purl all the way to the end. And I just slip as if to purl, and then I begin purling. I'm at the end of the row. I've purled all the way across. I don't worry too, too much if my purl stitches are not terribly tight. I'll turn my work back around. Again, I was here on the wrong side. I purled across. I'm going to turn my hand away from me so that I come all the way back around and it faces me. That was row one of the repeat. row two on the right side. And if you have trouble remembering which one is the right side, just remember if you're doing stockinette, it's the flat side. If you're looking at the inside, it's purl stitches. If you're doing any sort of cable pattern or any other pattern, just remember you want the front facing you. That's the right side and anything obviously is on the wrong side. Or you could always put a stitch marker on the front, on the right side, so you always see which side is the right side. 
row two. Slip one, then you will knit one, slip one over and over and over all the way to the end. You only slip the first stitch. So, because I'm gonna start with a knit stitch for the repeat part of this row, I'm going to slip this stitch as if to knit. And then knit. Now you can either slip as if to purl or slip as if to knit. I have found it doesn't make a difference either or for me personally. You do what you would prefer. It's a little bit faster if I just slip to purl, slip as if to purl as I continue moving forward. So I've slipped the first stitch, I knit the next stitch, I slip the next stitch, and here we go with the repeat. Knit, slip, knit, oops, slip, knit, slip, knit, and I'm going to redo this one. It's a little funny. There we go. Knit, slip, knit, slip all the way to the end. I've done my repeat of knit and slips all the way across to the end, ending on a knit stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work needle on the left towards me. This is my cable needle, so just ignore that. It's getting fumbly and getting in my way. So I'm going to again turn the left needle towards me so I get that working yarn. Row three, again on the wrong side, slip the first stitch, purl all the way across to the end. I'm going to slip as if to purl to keep that yarn in front. And then I'm just going to purl every single stitch all the way across.
way to the end. Now I'm going to turn my work to get this side. I'm going to turn this towards me. Row four, again on the right side, slip the first two stitches, then knit one, slip one all the way until you get to the last two stitches because those last two stitches will become two knit stitches. So this is slip slip. Now the repeat begins. Knit one, slip one, over and over to the last two stitches. Sometimes I automatically do a slip as if to knit. Again, to me, it doesn't really make a difference. Looks like I have a little bit of a loop lagging. Pull this a little bit up. There's a slip, last two stitches, knit. And knit. And that's the four row repeat that you'll do either seven times if you have a stitch count of 56, eight times if your stitch count is 64, nine times if your stitch count is 72. And you would have to modify the amount of rows that you do if you're not doing 56, 64, 72 stitch count. The reason why you're doing the amount of repeats is because when you look at the edge of these stitches once you're finished with your repeats, you will have 16, well, let me say this, you will have 14 side stitches on the edge, knit stitches to pick up, 14 if you have a 56 stitch count, 16 going up the edge if you have a 64 stitch count, or 18 going up the edge if you're doing the 72 stitch count. And again, it would vary if you're not sticking to one of those three which seem to be, from my experience, the standard stitch counts for socks. But everyone's foot's different, so you have to modify sometimes to get the best fit. And those three standards don't always apply. So I'm going to do a few more rows, and then I'll do a new video once I am done with my repeat of row one through four, seven times. So I've completed row four on the right side. I want to start the repeat 
and get to the wrong side by turning. Now, just a suggestion. If you happen to lose your place and you put this down and you don't know which row you're on or even which repeat you're on, just a suggestion, something that I found that's helpful. Get two different color stitch counters, row counters, however you want to call it. Big buttons let you just keep going up and up and up. Little button goes all the way back to zero. So I'm going to, and then just clip on little pop holders in the back. You can get these at any craft store or on Amazon. You can actually get them um, in a pretty big pack for less than $10 on Amazon and they work just fine, just as good as what you would get at the store. Um, but it's a lot cheaper going through Amazon when you do it in bulk. Um, but I like to have one color on my right thumb, one color on my left thumb, me, this would be my row counter. So I need to turn to get back to row one. So let's say I've already finished row four and I've done it one time. I just finished row four, it's what I ended on. And I've done rows one through four one time. So what I'm going to do, I want to start over turned my work and turning this towards me and you can flip this back and forth whichever is easier for you you don't have to follow how I'm flipping it back and forth obviously but I'm going to turn this around so that I'm back into the starting position for row one which is start on the wrong side I'm going to Turn that back to zero because I want to start on row one. And when I am done, I could either hold this and leave it alone. And once I hit row four, then click it because then I know I've done a total of two repeats. Or I can go ahead and just start the count now. I'm on row one and I'm in the middle of repeat number two. It's whichever is the easiest for you to remember. Or you can obviously just write it down and check off that you've done rows one through four, repeat one, rows one through four, repeat two. Or you could even do uh, the little light bulb stitch markers or any stitch marker and then just put one here and then as you go up you'll see visually on the knitting your repeats row one wrong side is slip one purl to the end difficult to do this when you're trying to look through or around a camera phone. There we go.
going to turn my work away from me to get back to the right side. Row two. Slip one and then repeat, knit, slip, knit, slip all the way to the end. Slip and then knit, slip and then knit all the way to the end. Knit and slip all the way to the end. Looks like I somehow got an extra piece of yarn by accident. Knit, slip, no idea how I picked up those. It was somehow with the purl stitch that I was just picking up one of the bars in between by accident. Knit the last stitch. I'm going to turn my work towards me so that I get back to the wrong side. Row three on the wrong side, slip one, purl to the end. Slip the first stitch, purl every single stitch all the way to the end. Normally I wouldn't be using a size zero needle for fingering weight that's been doubled while I knit, but I want these to be super dense, thick socks. And I did not like the way that they knitted up the first time using 2.75 needle or even a 2.50 but I do like the way it's knitting up on a size zero it doesn't give me too much stretch to the point where it's oversized and it's baggy on the foot and the ankle I want it to still be snug and doing it this way on this size needle gives me what I need Curl to the end. I'm going to ignore this cable needle, obviously. Turn my work so I get back to the right side. Now I'm going to go to row three. 
Oh, you see, that was a mistake. I was just on row three. Got to make sure to use your stitch counters. But that's also how you um, learn to read your knitting. Because you know now you just did a slip one purl across. You're now back on the right side. You're on row four. And with practice, you'll learn to read your knitting. So row four, right side, slip two, then the repeat of knit one, slip one until you get to the last two stitches at the end. So I'm going to slip the first two stitches and then knit, and I'm just going to slip this way, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit. Slip, knit, slip, all the way to the end. And I may flip back and forth between slipping as if to purl or slipping as if to knit. And again, to me personally, it doesn't make me that much of a difference. It's on the heel. It's going to get stepped on and worn out eventually. So to me, it's no big deal. Slip, knit. It doesn't matter and twist, so I'm just going to do it this way. Slip. Last two stitches, knit them. Knit and knit. That's row four. So now I've done two repeats of rows one through four. And now I want to start over, put that back to zero, and then I'll flip, reset to zero. I'm sorry, reset to row one. And I'm going to start on repeat three. I'm going to put it back at two until I get up to row four and then I'll hit three. That way I know I've completed a full one through four three times. Once I get to the end of row four, I'll click this to three. So I'll go ahead and stop here and then I'll come back once I'm done with my seven rounds, my seven repeats of row one through four for the Eye of Partridge Heel.